So what we've got is a flexible 160 watt, 160 watt solar panel. We'll hook it up together and it'll go into our brand new controller. I had to get a new controller because the old one was only 20 amp. If you're ever wondering what IP ratings mean, um, now you know. gone with these flexible solar panels because we want to mount them on the side and if we'd mounted um, the solid glass ones big wave hitting the side would crash it but we think these ones should survive pretty well so what we've got is a flexible 160 watt 160 watt solar panel on that um, quite thin quarter inch thermalite that I was using before remember poly linked plastic foam with chop strand fiberglass through it. So I didn't, um, I didn't glass this one, all right? I didn't particularly want it all that stiff. All it has to do is support these flexible panels. So what we'll do, the back stays are quite handy there. Um, I can actually lash a line from there, coming down to, I can quite easily install a saddle yeah on that side to hold it um, and then just have another stay from below to stop it from blowing up in the wind that's that's a pretty attractive option at the moment because when we're sailing i'll have that line to to pull in and, and attach to a cleat to hold it down okay so when we're sailing it's come down like that and then when, whenever we want to um, get solar power undo it off the cleat flip it up take that line and just clip it onto the saddle it's very simple, so that, that sort of appeals to me. For the hinge mechanism, we've got these 20 mil construction packer, all right, those plastic big packers. Cut them down so they're all, well, I actually just cut it in quarters. That was the easiest way to do it. And then I cut a one inch hole through them because there's this one inch stainless tube. And we installed that, and that's, that's a pretty good hinge. And I chose that way because this stuff's really easy to screw into. It holds a screw really well and it's just so basic. So by cutting a one inch hole on, all I did is thread it onto this stainless. Then this stainless is attached by canopy clamps to the back. I glassed up, um, a la David in Cairns, I glassed up my own stanchion base because I just couldn't find one strong enough, to be honest, in, in the chandelier. I wasn't that thrilled by them. So I just glassed up one here. And I am going to put another support from here, but we don't have it just yet. And there we go. The stainless support. 45 degree or something. Yeah, so I'll take a I'll take a support from here to the side of uh, of the cockpit coming. Mm -hmm. We don't walk through here; it's too much of a narrow area. So yeah. that'll that'll give it enough strength that if we um you know if we're coming up by the dive ladder and we want to just grab a hold of this, you could already. I mean, that's not the stanchion base wobbling. That's just the play that's in the in the base itself where the pole goes in. Yeah, much like most stanchions, I guess. So now I just need to take the power run it down below and we'll hook it up together and it'll go into our brand new controller. I had to get a new controller because the old one was only 20 amp and this system is going to put out a lot more. All right, now I need to run a whole bunch of cable through our deck to connect up our solar panels. It has to be waterproof, all right? No drips, no drops, nothing. Um, there's, you can buy various um, through holes and things like that. And as long as the rubber seals within them work um, and don't perish, then they remain waterproof. You know, IP67, you can, you can immerse them. Um, once the rubber in them starts to perish, though, you start to get leaks. So I've found when I'm running cabling through decks, um, a good way to do it is to actually 
use a through hull fitting okay these things are designed to last a long time and they're designed for underwater immersion so I like to on my deck get a hole saw drill a hole that's that diameter from underneath fit our through hull then the pad and then this on the deck and then the wiring goes through this and what I have is just a bit of one inch uh, corrugated hose that slips over this, it goes over the wire and you can just put a gooseneck in and it, it's, it's a water, like no water will ever come in to that fitting. Here we are just testing for fit, but in the final installation everything will be dust free and we'll add a bead of sealant to the gasket. Okay, well we're going to hook up our solar panels now, and these solar panels come with some pretty neat little fittings, All right, a male and a female that connects together. So the convention here positive, the, the, the male fitting is positive, and the female fitting is negative. Feminist the world over cried. So IP67 is the rating these are given. You might have seen IP ratings on telephones, fittings, all sorts of stuff like that. With IP67, IP is international protection or ingress protection. And the 67 is a, it's a two part code, all right? The six says that it's dust proof. Um, and when they're testing, they even apply a vacuum to it to see if any dust can make ingress into the fitting. So six says that these are completely dust proof. And the second part, seven of 67, means that they are also proof against um, water ingress, a meter underwater for 30 minutes. So these are really great fittings. Um, for a yacht, I mean, they'll only be, have to be splash proof, but IP67, that's a, that's a really high rating. So these are good fittings. And what, what makes it so is you've got this rubber O-ring here. So when these go together, that rubber O-ring will engage and the two electrical fittings are inside there and they connect. Where you connect it at the back, it's got like a little rubber collar, very supple and it goes inside these fingers here so that when you screw this fitting on which is slightly cone shaped it actually engages and squeezes all of those little fingers evenly and it's sort of because you're twisting it it sort of shuts a little bit like the aperture on the camera that i'm talking to you right now and so once it's screwed up nice and tight that o-ring will shrink right down and grab onto the wire that we're using. Okay, it's got a nice round cross section. We'll grab a hold of it and water won't be able to get past it or dust. IP67. So if you're ever wondering what IP ratings mean, um, now you know. All right, so what we're going to do, these wires here, they've come off the solar panel. Because they're going to tilt up, I need, I need to allow a little bit of, um, you know, what do you call it, slack? <laughs> All right, I need to have a little bit of slack there just though, so it can move but um, I am zippy tying it and if we, if we go and have a look at one that I've already done here um, I've secured it quite nicely to the barbwick so there's no movement because um, inside of here even though they're metal strands not, not a solid rod like you have in house wiring on marine you want to have multi-strand wire with too much movement um, and vibration over time you could end up fracturing those so you really do want to secure your wiring quite well when you're doing any boat work and that's what I've done here all right, so we've got these really tough cables coming out of here and I'm gonna add the joiners. Um, the solar panel output is only going to be, well, it's gonna be under 15 amp, but rather than 15 amp cable, we've got 25 amp cable. Um, we had a little bit of a chat to the man in the shop and we all agreed that 25 uh, amp cable would be a lot better because we wouldn't have any voltage drop, all right? There's sufficient wire for all the electrons to pass down all at once, if you like, um, with no resistance causing a, a voltage drop across the wiring so it's nice and heavy gear so we've got our wires here i've cut them to length the wires flush with the insulation i've seen all sorts of things like you know slicing with a knife cutting with pliers trying to pull the best way to do um, to do it 
is proper proper electricians wire strippers. They're not that expensive. They're a good thing to have on your boat if you have an old boat because over time you will be doing quite a bit of wiring. And all you do is you just chuck, you just place it in the jaws like that, see how much wire you want to strip. And look at that, beautiful and neat. <laughs> that was so easy. It was so easy, it's worth going out and buying them. All right, so if we pull the actual crimp fittings out of these things, with the female fitting, it actually has a female fitting here, much like your bullet connectors, and the male has that as well. And inside the fitting, they actually go in together like that and make a really good contact. I'll do that male one first. So I need to, well, yeah, I need to put the, the collar on there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of heat shrink. Okay, this is plastic tubing, and it's got a type of glue in there as well. And when you apply heat to it, it shrinks down over your electrical connections. So we'll chuck that on there. And the reason I'm doing that is um, it will it'll give additional sealing to this crimp that I'm about to do. And it also added a little bit more body to that for that that, uh, that sphincter seal to, um, to grip onto. And the other nice thing that I've got for making crimped connections is these. And they've got a bit of a ratchet in them and they shut down and they release only at that click, a certain pressure. So all the other time, you do have a little button here that you can push and release it or a little lever, but it's really good because it's the same stress all the time you put on your fittings till you hear that click and then it lets go. Chuck that crimp on. It all looks pretty good. So I'm going to use I'm going to use that number six crimp, that large one first, just to close that crimp down, round it off. Like that, and just to make doubly certain, I'll go the next one up as well, and just really push it in. There's my click. There we go. All right, a lot of the time, if this was, um, let's say, an eyelet or something like that on a bus bar, um, open, to the, open to the air and a little bit of salt, I'd probably go to the extra effort of putting some solder in there. But because I'm putting this on there, which will help with strain relief, and also it's got this collar and an IP67 fitting, I think I might be able to get away without soldering that. So, probably upset someone out there. And another thing that I'll probably upset them about is using a flame to do heat shrink, but I don't have a I don't have a hot air gun at the moment, so I'm just gonna have to bear with me. Just don't use a lighter. There we go. And now I want my male fitting. And inside of here you're not going to be able to see it through the camera, but there's a little metal collar and it's going to engage with this when I push it in. So all you do is just push it in the back end until you hear it engage and click. Make sure I've got the rubber in there. Yes, I do. And you just wind this on. And you wind it on nice and firmly all the way to the end. And you can see, like when you give it a spin, it's 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 bringing the wire with it. All right, that rubber seal has grabbed that wire. So now, at least from this end, it's watertight. All right, so there we go. She's water she's watertight at the back end. Obviously, it's open at the front, but we can see there's a little contact there, just waiting for our male fitting to go into. And as soon as we close it down, and those little teeth engage inside there. That will be a connection. That O-ring will engage in there and this will be a, a nice IP67 ingress protected seal. All right, I'll just do the other one. Um, I'll just put the other female fitting on here, which is exactly the same. Don't need to go over it again. And that will be, that will be the, the top side connections done. And then down below, I've got a nice enclosure um, and we'll hook it all up. I might have to squeeze into a hole. I don't know how I'm gonna film it. It's gonna be awkward. Um, we'll zip and tie everything together and then we'll 
pop it down through our deck fitting that we put in yesterday with some small trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. And we need to cut our hose down so it's, it makes a gooseneck. So about there, about there is the is the length of the hose that we're going to need. But you'll see once it's all finished that this will be a be a really nice. Um, a pretty pretty waterproof way of chucking a wire through the deck. Probably a little bit clunky, but it's it, it's proof against quite a bit of immersion. Good pair of side cutters is useful for cutting wire, but also trimming your zip ties nice and close and easily. Is that how you straighten your hose? <laughs> It's a large cable tie. This is really where this um, tool comes into its own, where you've got no space to crimp. To yeah, you know, no space to swing a cat, as it were. So that crimp crimp could already be set in the jaws and ready. With this one, I've gone and got um, these nice glands, made a nice uh, enclosure here, and then the wires are going to be attached to this bus, and the glands offer uh, strain relief. They support the wire, and then I'll be putting other wire supports as well. So again, I'm not, um, I'm not too concerned about keeping water here uh, from getting to this wiring by either solder or shrink wrap, because I'm going to put it into an enclosure that's got a watertight seal on it. There we have our wiring. I've got those 8mm crimped on fittings and they're going to go on these studs here, negative and positive. So all of the solar panel um, wiring is going to come in through these glands, one, two, three, positive and negative and then the output going off to our controller will be through this lower, much larger gland here. So this is going to be 56 amp cable and all of these smaller ones coming in at 25 amp. And because we'll have positive here and negative here, that means everything will be wired parallel. Okay, so the amperages will be cumulative, but the voltage will all remain the same. Isn't this wonderful and cozy in here? All right, so that's the little enclosure box that I've um, that I've gone and you know installed there, and it's got a clear cover. And the reason being is so I can leopard crawl up into here and just give it a visual inspection without having to take that lid off. It won't it won't require tools. So once I've got all that wiring uh, touched up, I'll just spray it with a little bit of um, spray on grease, and then that should be good. I'll, I'll put this I'll put this lid on and yeah, just a visual inspection every couple of months just to make sure there's no, I don't know, scorching or anything else like that. Everything looks tight and snug. You know, I can, I can actually loosen off those glands and give the wires a wiggle and just see if those nuts move at all. Um, so having a clear cover on, uh, on your junction boxes, the ones that are out of sight, you know, so you don't have to worry about the aesthetics of them, it makes a lot of sense. I, I think it's a good thing to do. Our 10 mil crimps are on. We chose to wire our panels in a parallel configuration rather than in series, giving us a 12 volt output that can tolerate shading of part of the system due to the isolation diodes in each panel. What you got there? This is a 50 amp MPP T solar charge controller. Pretty big, eh? So. Now we've been the smallest boat with the biggest dinghy, now I'd say we're the smallest boat with the biggest <laughs> solar array. 
so we're going to have lots of power. It's not going to actually be dealing with 50 amps. Um, it's expandable in the future, but it was going to be a bit more than 30 amps. So we had to just make that next jump up. So it's, it's quite a bit bigger than the 30 amp would have been, um, but it should be able to handle it and take it all in its stride. So it's a big unit. It's not particularly, you know, I don't want to look at it all the time. So I can mount it in here. And the other attractive thing is that it's got an airspace behind it. So these cooling fins, if I mount it right there, um, that should be really, that should really enable it to get a lot of airflow behind its cooling fins um, and be really great. Because they're saying you really need 15 um, centimetres, you know, 150 mil around it to help with the cooling but it, it's it can just draw straight through there straight through that gap um, and that'll be that'll be a great way to shed excess heat everything's hooked up all the way up to this stage okay if i went ahead and cut through both of those now you know what would happen the solar that's being out because at the moment it's just open voltage the solar panels can quite happily be making making power but it's not going anywhere it doesn't harm them but if i suddenly just went snip across positive and negative i would actually bridge it for a little while <laughs> and i dare say a little a few sparks and some smoke would come out of there i don't think it would do everything all that much good so i've got the got the size that i want there i might just cut them one at a time how about that That just seems like better policy, doesn't it? We have all our cables more or less just there, ready to, to hook up into the um, into the unit. And it's pretty tempting just to like, oh, well, I'll just strip those cables and I'll stick them straight in the unit and uh, then hook up the battery and see how I go. What do we do? We look at the instructions and to see if that's the right thing to do. And lo and behold, they've actually got a diagram for connecting and disconnecting the system sequence, okay? So what it says is, positive to battery, then negative to battery, then positive from the uh, solar cells, and then negative from the solar cells. And then of course you've got the loads over there. So... We want to do the battery first. We want to do the battery first. <laughs> so... Good work. Reading the instructions is, um, you know, like when you're the engineer on a boat, all you are is the guy that's paid to read the instructions. <laughs> Like you can know a bit, but you can't know everything. So you like always read the instructions. It's just such such a basic thing to do, and it's just overlooked by most of us fellas. I see I see ladies often going for the instructions, um, but yeah, guys like to be a bull at a gate, and I was just like that. Um, but you get older. I don't know if you get wiser, but you get sick of wasting money. So we've plugged everything in. But we've only got eight amps. But I don't know whether that's the controller only putting eight amps Limiting in it. because yep. it's at 13 point whatever volts it is at the moment. All right, in a bit of a break from our normal filming MO, um, obviously we're a few months ahead, or the videos are a few months behind where we actually are. So this is the, the, the present day. Um, and I just want to talk about these solar panels. Now when we when we um, when we bought them from Oz Plaza, you know they 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 said that they were 160 watt, but they were really cheap 160 watt panels. So we installed them, and when we got sunlight on them, um, the output wasn't what we expected. The both 160 watts combined were putting out the same output as our existing 160 watt system. So we did we um, we gave Oz Plaza a bit of a call and they asked us to make a video. So we made them these videos and we sent them off. All right, just a quick demonstration because if I have to crawl into the nether regions to put a multimeter on the terminals, it doesn't matter, we'll show you the same thing, but um, I'm just gonna cover each of our solar panels in turn. So the two sole raisers here, the flexibles, and our other one. So it's 160 watt, 160 watt, 160 watt. And as I cover them up so the sun's not getting to it, we'll just show what the volts and what the amps are on our charge controller. They just film what the charge controller is now. Okay. 
Okay. So there you go, 3.7 amps coming out of that solar panel because now we've got 13 amps going in. So there was 3.7 amps coming out of that panel right. in full sun. Okay, in full sun. I'll, I'll block the other one. There's no shade spots. Yeah. It's not a heat problem either because I only just stood it up. So it's, cool. It's not hot to the time. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Okay, there we go, 12.8 amps. So again, about four amps coming off that one. Okay, so now we're gonna cover our old 160 watt panel, panels. You might need something else. I'll just show you the controller now. There you go. So we've got both panels in full sun and they're putting out seven amps, 6.9 amps. So each panel, yeah, is putting between three and four amps in only into the battery in full sun. It's the middle of the day. I want to say because you tested them with the multimeter as well, the voltage coming out of the panels. Yeah, so wherever the voltage is, the open, the open circuit of this panel was uh, 21 volts when I tested it, and then when we had it all up and running, it was about 16 volts coming in. So they were all they all tested about the same voltage as well. Yeah. So these ones, these ones, and these ones were within a decimal point of each other. Okay. And also, um, if you're wondering about the wiring, so from the IP67 connector, we've got 25 amp, um, 25 amp wiring, and it's running about 900 millimetres to a, a junction box, and then another 1.4 metres to the controller. But all of these have exactly the same length of wiring line. Yeah. What we ended up with after those videos was just more requests for information and it was ongoing and everything else like that. And I sort of lost patience dealing with um, a Chinese complaints department. I thought I was buying Australian, but I wasn't. So lesson learned. So what we've, we have stuck with the panels, all right? We haven't pursued a return or a refund or anything like that. And the reason being is it's, it's meeting our energy requirements. But what we essentially bought was correctly priced 90 to 100 watt panels <laughs> rather than cheap 160 watt panels. And I think that's the lesson with, um, with buying solar. And anyone that's got a bit more knowledge about it than I do, um, you know, in the field of reselling and everything like that, they would probably say the difference between the expensive panels and the cheap panels is that the expensive panels do what they say they're going to do and the cheap panels possibly won't, uh, which comes as a complete no surprise to anyone, I guess. But, you know, look, it's been a few months and the panels as they are, um, they are, they're performing great, they're, they're supplying our energy needs. They're not as much as what we thought it was, but in the long run, all it really meant is that we installed too big uh, uh, a solar charge controller into our system, paid an extra $100, um, but yeah, in reality, we paid the correct price for 90 watt, 100 watt panels, rather than getting a really great deal on 160 watters. So, there we go. Says me right, doesn't it? <laughs>
Next week, we untie the lines and say goodbye to Townsville, heading south with the wind to the beautiful Whitsundays. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Free Range Sailing. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. To be notified each time we release a video, you'll need to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button on our channel page. If you're interested in finding out more about the music used or supporting Free Range Sailing through one of our crowdfunding platforms, you will find more information in the description of this video. See you next week.